Good morning guys, welcome back to the farm. Righty-o guys, so we finished seeding all of our vetch out of Blaley yesterday. We uh, had about 130 hectares of vetch out here, so as I said in the last video, we did jag 20 odd millimetres of rain out here, plus we had some more showers the other day, so, and it looks like we're going to get a half decent rain on, well, this Friday, Saturday, so what is it today? I think it's Thursday today, so, yeah, not far away, but this morning we've got the truck, just come out to pick up the truck, we're going to go back, get some more seed, get some more burp, get up, got a 30 hectare paddock there at home that uh, we want to get seeded today, and then We'll move on to our second to last paddock of vetch. So we have really started to move through it. It's been really good. these cold mornings my lips and hands and nothing wants to work but anyway we just got to go grab a couple of things and then we'll head up and fill up and get cracking Get a crank check done, make sure we got seed and fur coming out everywhere, and then we're into it. There's still plenty of moisture under here. Yeah, so the only block of ours that hasn't really caught a decent rain yet is just around home. Up here at Ramson, seem to have been on the you know, on the edge of catching sort of some reasonable rain off the last couple of events. Out at the Laley North, we've had 23 or four millimeters. Warabra, we've had 35, and we haven't gone back and checked since the last couple of um, rains that we've had, but I mean, it's all grazing over there anyway, but that's still a really, really good start to the season. So we just got to hope that Tomorrow, Saturday, maybe we can get a good 15 to 20 mil around home. And well, here as well, this is only about 10 k's from home anyway, but it just seemed to have been the last couple of rains that went through are a bit more northern and there just seems to be a lot more moisture up here than there is at home. So it's funny like that, it's not far away, but it can be all the difference. Might have a bit of a scratch around because this country here is a bit softer than the stuff out at Belaley, so make sure I'm not going in too deep. I hate scratching around for vetch. It is so hard to find it. There's a fertiliser. I reckon we could probably just come up a, a hair. Yeah, it's a bit... The top's a little crusty. 
and uh, the, it's a little it's a little uh, softer because it's being cropped so just come up a hair I think so yeah I have actually managed to kick dad out of the tractor now for a couple of days um, oh he did three days I suppose this is my third day but yeah it's nice to get behind the wheel and have a bit of a go loving the tractor so far it's been great uh, probably saving about 30 percent on fuel i reckon over the old tractor and we're just able to pull it exactly how we want it's it's really nice up through all these hills where it's you know it's a little crusty on top and pulling up with a big air seat of full just no problems whatsoever so no complaints at the moment So you probably see that we're working this paddock on a slightly different angle to how we seeded it last year. And look, that's just because the crops were pretty heavy and we just want to make sure we get back through the stubble all right. But in saying that, this crop was harvested so low to the ground and it's had a lot of sheep in here, so it's not really a big deal. But yeah, there probably is definitely some wheat stubbles that we're going to struggle to get through. So. Uh, we're just going to do it like this this year, um, just so we don't have any dramas. I don't know, that's what people are telling me that they're doing these days. They're working their stubbles on a slight angle just to help you get back through them. And because, well, the steering on the old tractor wasn't that great. It wasn't steering all that straight. So you're going to struggle to go directly between the rows anyway. And then all you do is you end up going through and scooping out all the barley with all the roots like the barley stubble with all the roots and everything like that and you just make a big mess but from what i can tell every steering system seems to struggle on the side of our hills like here this thing ain't even doing that good a job so how on earth i'm supposed to come back if i had a heavy crop in here and go between the rows i don't really know because got that great big air seater hanging off the back and you just get a bit of drift down the hills and you know you, you just struggle with it so this might be more of the normal going forward but in saying that can't say i'm overly impressed with what it's doing but it's yeah it's not horrible and like there's some patches in here like where i am now where the sheep have just absolutely thrashed and there's nothing even left here so Anyway, we're going to keep persevering with this method and see how it goes throughout the season. You can see we're seeding this fairly fast. We're getting up around that, well, I've got it set at 9.8 k's an hour in here. And that's just because it's vetch, we're really not that worried about it. It doesn't, it's not like we've got a chemical on the ground that we're worried about soil throw or anything like that. So we're just, we're just hooting along uh, much faster than this and it doesn't seem like it does a very great job. It just seems like the bar gets a bit of bounce and all that sort of thing. So 9.6, 9.8, we're getting through 10, 10.2 hectares an hour, which is good going. And it's just, it's just feed, it's just a break crop. So um, yeah, we're just, we're just cruising. Now vetch, why vetch? Why are we seeding vetch right now? Vetch is uh, one of our break crops instead of growing peas or beans or putting some canola or something like that in to clean up the grasses vetch peas beans crops like that they return nitrogen to the soil as well so uh, we use those as a break crop but predominantly dad on his land uses vetch because it's good sheep feed it's um, puts a lot of nitrogen back into the soil and he can graze his sheep on it very heavily so that's sort of why um, our optimal seeding date for our crops is not until in May, so because we're too frosty, we don't want to go too early, otherwise we risk getting frosted, but for vetch and this stuff, we just want to get it in the ground, get it up as soon as possible, because the sooner we get it in and up, the sooner we, you know, Dad's got sheep feed and we can get sheep back out into the paddocks and that, and that sort of thing. But yeah, honestly, if it was up to me, I'd be putting beans or peas or something like this in here for harvest because we've got the gear it's very inefficient to not use it you've got machinery sitting in the shed but that's the way our farm works we're mixed so that's just the way it rolls and i mean typically our biggest problem is lack of rainfall or not enough rainfall and crops like your canolas and your beans and your peas they're the first ones to flake it when it starts to get a little bit tough so that's sort of why, you know, years ago, Dad did plant canola a lot, and you know, he was probably a little bit more heavily, like heavily into the cropping. But just you get runs of dry years, and those crops don't do well, and you think, why am I wasting my time doing it? But 
uh, you know, and then he just changed over to vetch because, you know, it does everything that he wants. It's feed, it's nitrogen fixing, it cleans up the grasses and all that sort of thing. Oh yeah, and also the reason you want the nitrogen back in the soil is because your wheats and your barleys use a lot of nitrogen. So it reduces the amount of nitrogen fertiliser you got to put down when you put your wheat in, which is a good thing. Well, we are a bit over halfway through that paddock. Uh, it's time to do a crank, che crank chest? Crank test. Make sure we've still got seed and fur coming out. And then I've got to get out of here. I've been, I've been uh, called up. I've been called up for the big jobs. No, apparently Dad needs a hand back at home there, so... I am uh, going to have to go give him a hand, unfortunately. I might have to come back later on this evening and do this. Finish this off. Now that guy looks poisonous. Rightio guys, so what we've got here is a wheat stubble. It's about 20 hectares just next to the house and we're prickle chaining it because we're going to burn it. Yes, I said it, we're going to burn it. Uh, the reason we're going to burn it is <coughs> there's too much ryegrass in it at a harvest time. We harvested it very, very high off the ground so we weren't getting too much ryegrass seed. And we thought we'd pull the old burning method out of the 1980s and just see whether we can get any control over the ryegrass, clean the paddock up so we can put our vetch in here, get back through with the air seeder, all that sort of thing. Now this is definitely not something that we do very often. It's very, 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 very rare that we do this, but it's a tool and we're going to try and use it. So there's a few reasons I guess that you would burn. Try to get control of some weeds, that's one. Uh, secondly, get rid of your stubble so your chemicals do a better job. Snails, that's just a few. There's probably many, many other reasons that you could burn, but it's not all that widely practiced anymore, burning off. But there is still a little bit of it, but not something that we do. So today we're gonna we're gonna do it though. <laughs> and sorry, I'm just trying to concentrate here. I'm just freehand steering it. So as I said, the main goal here is to try and get control of some ryegrass, and obviously get rid of the stubble so we can get back through with the air seeder. And why are we prickle chaining it? Well, I don't really know, because that's what Dad wants to do. He seems to think that it'll burn better. After it's been prickle chained, I would have thought it would have burned better standing up because it gets more oxygen around it and all that sort of thing, but I'm just, I'm just the worker, all right? <laughs> Someone might be saying, why don't you just disc the stubble in or work it in or do some sort of tillage, I guess, uh, to work the stubble back into the ground. Well, a couple of reasons, really. It's not going to offer us any benefit for our wheat problem, for a start. And secondly, as I said earlier, moisture is our number one problem in our area. Lack of, most of the time. So opening up the soil does nothing for our soil retention. It also opens us up to... Well, what if we dish the, the uh, stubble in after we finish grazing it in February or something and then we go to a massive rain event or wind event and we blow or wash half of our soil away? That's not really ideal, so you could say, oh, well, you're going to have it bare now. Yes, we are, but we're actually going to probably come in and seed it tomorrow and then we're expecting 10 to 20 millimetres of rain, so that'll hopefully get the vetch going in there and we'll have coverage back over it. Alright, so we're just going to drag the old AFM out and we're just going to do a lap around the outside with the wings folded up like that just so we've got a half decent fire break around the paddock so we'll get that done and then we're ready to burn So you might be able to see that bit of a windrow there that was Daddy came out with a hay rake and he just went around this outside section 
Uh, just to get rid of any of the long bits of straw or chaff out of the way and then I'm just coming through at the moment and, and uh, ripping a bit of a line along the, along the fence so it'll go all the way around and hopefully that'll be enough. Um, it's a pretty nice day for burning, there's not a lot of wind out there. Uh, just a gentle southerly and it's, it's not very warm either so hopefully it's a good thing. We've also got this vetch stubble to the north of us, so there's not a lot in there to burn. Uh, if the wind does manage to somehow blow it into there, it's not going to get far. Well, go check with the old man, but I reckon it's just about go time. It looks like where all systems go, but I might put this up the front just in case I need it, which hopefully I will not. I've needed it more this year than I would have liked to have needed it. All right, firefighting support on duty. I'll stay down here and make sure we don't jump over that fire break at all. So what he does, because the wind's coming from the south, sort of southeast almost, we start on the northern end, so we make sure that's under control here and then we start moving back down through the paddock and we'll get the rest of it. She's going to be a pretty hot burn, there's plenty of fuel there. The uh, fire break appears to be doing its job at the moment, that's very nice. Not really the place I want to be, but I thought I'd wind the window up and just come along. North fence and make sure it's not getting away anywhere. She is absolutely roaching at the moment. It's what? It's too dusty? Too smoky, yeah. What do you think? Good. <laughs> anyway, I better keep moving. Well, the north end and the west fence looking good at the moment. Got a good break there. We're about to get her really cranking. Absolutely unreal the amount of heat coming off that. Well, that's really it. Once that gets going through the paddock, the rest is gone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Now I knew when you came up this edge, I thought it's going to go pretty quick now. Yeah. And just like that, she's pretty well all done. <laughs> Once the outside was done, the inside took about two minutes, I think. Well, that's it. Excitement over. All done. The fire break held up. Everything went pretty well to plan. It was pretty routine, to be honest. So, uh, it's good. Everyone's safe. Nothing got away. Job done. You guys would have had prime view. Whoa, that's a big somersault. Yeah. Yeah. You can do good ones now. Perfect conditions for it. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it? The wind was actually. I took. Just <laughs> the area. Righty oi, back to seeding my paddock.
that's it for the day. Done, done and dusted. Another paddock in the books. Final strip. Um, yeah, we're gonna ride home now. Not far to go, about 10 k's. Probably fill up with fuel. And then uh, get ready to smash out the last two paddocks of vetch tomorrow, which would be great before hopefully. Whoa, 20 millimeters of rain tomorrow night. That'd be great. Yeah, that's fine. We are filled up with fuel and tucked away in the shed, guys. And that's about all I've got for you all today. As always, thank you so much for watching the videos. I really do appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, hit that button. Hit that little subscription button. It really helps me out. So uh, thanks again, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one. See you next time. Another horseshoe. I'll have to tell the old man about that one. He's always amazed how many horseshoes we still get.